And now the news in detail. African diaspora returnees have expressed dissatisfaction over Section 258 in the draft constitution on land ownership. If instituted in the new constitution, non-Gambian citizens can be precluded from land ownership except on short renewable leasehold terms. QTV's Momodo Lamin Choi had a face-to-face -face interview with them and he now reports. Fear worry and surprise have befallen these non-Gambian citizens for they could be disqualified from permanently owning land if the entire section 258 of the new draft constitution is implemented. According to this section, only Gambians can own land permanently while non-Gambian citizens can only own land on a leased whole basis for 30 years with a 90 years maximum renewal period. These non-citizens are African diaspora returnees who settled in the country with their families. They emphasized to QTV that Gambia is the land they have chosen to return to and resettle, do business and live for good, adding that to them, Europe is a foreign land they no longer desire to reside in. Julia Ruyan and Shakina Chinedu are African diaspora returnees in the Gambia who fight for the return of their fellow members of the African diaspora. Both feel insecure having read the draft laws on land ownership. The fear is that when we're not wanted and we'll be dispossessed of our land, dispossessed of our property, it's going to stop inward investment. People aren't going to want to come here, not even on holiday. This is the fear. So it's really going to affect your tourism. If Thomas Cook didn't affect your tourism, this will. I've been here 15 years. I've bought land. I want to pass that land on to my children. I'm hoping that one day when I'm a grandmother, they will pass it on to their children. But Clause 258 does not allow us to do that. So what does that mean? Does it mean we have to pack up and leave? Or does it mean, you know, we have to make our submissions and we will be heard? Nobody knows. And it's very disheartening right now. Juliet, Shakina and their families say land ownership is a necessity for them to live, do business and hand over to their children for inheritance. Juliet's son, Adrian Rian, is happy to have left Europe for the Gambia where he is pleased to have joined a school. But Africa is a whole paradise, a real one, and I love Gambia. The schools here are the best. But now... Juliet, Shakina and their families are uncertain about what the future holds in a country they regard as their ancestral home. These African diaspora returnees are now awaiting the outcome of the final draft constitution. They explain what their plan is if the draft law on land ownership succeeds into implementation. We're more or less looking at leaving, you know, move to another African country that may welcome us with our investment. Because you don't want to be 30 years down the line after work so hard to build up your fortune, to have the possibility of the chance of losing it. It's, it's terrible. It's not good. I'm on Lamin Sima, the Gambia's ambassador at Light for Business and Investment, says that draft law on land ownership, if implemented, will affect business, and he hopes that it will be reconsidered for its otherwise likely adverse effect on our economy. Making it uh, easier for investors is to let them uh, own their own lands by them, do you understand, as citizens. That is my own personal opinion. Anyway, to be able this will uh, help investors or it will encourage them to come and invest here. Apart from land ownership, another of their demands is automatic citizenship, which a law can guarantee for them for a more favorable environment that will also inspire the African diaspora to come and settle in the Gambia. In 2007, Ghana became the first African country to provide the right to return and indefinite stay for Africans in the diaspora. On December 28, 2016, a ceremony for Africans from the diaspora to receive Ghanaian citizenship was held at the W.E.B. Dubois Center in Accra, Ghana. I'm Adlam Enchoy for QTV News.